Hey, what's up? Welcome back to uh, this new video. This one is paper 3.3 of October, November 2010 of A-Level Math. Now, with that being said, obviously, let's move on to the questions we have for you today. So here in question number one, we have to expand this thing in ascending powers of x up to x squared. So pretty easy. Let's see how can we do this. So first, we know we have to use the, the formula, right, which is 1. 1 plus x power uh, n. This is only possible if this is plus 1. And this is negative or fraction. It will be 1 plus nx plus n times n minus x, x squared divided by 2 factorial, plus it keeps going on, but again, we will just stop because we only need until x squared, right? Now, next step, obviously, let's compare. Here we have 1 plus 2x power minus 3. This is a plus 1. This is negative. So yes, we can use the, the formula. Now, here we have x, but here we have 2x. Here n is equal to minus 3. So x is equal to 2x, n is equal to minus 3. So we just have to replace back in this equation. You will have 1 plus n is minus 3. x is 2x plus minus 3 minus 4, 2x squared divided by 2 factorial. Now simplify, let's see what happens. Um, well, you will have 1 minus 6x, right, 2 times minus 3 is 6, um, and here we have what? That will be uh, 3 times 4 is 12, divided by 2, that should be 6. So you have 6 times 4, right, that will be 24x squared, okay? So yes, we can stop right here, because we only need up to the term in x squared, so we can stop right here for the expansion of this thing. And this is your question number 1. Now let's move on to question number two. So here we have uh, parametric equations of a curve given to you by these two. x is t over 2t plus 3, y is exponential minus 2t. Now find the gradient of the curve when this is zero. So again, what is the gradient? Well, as we have seen before, it is simply dy by dx. Now how would you find this? By using the chain rule, right? So dy by dx is equal to what? As you can see on top, we have dy multiplied by something, on the base, we have dx. Now, they are connected by this variable t, so that will have to be dt over here and dt over here. So the idea is we have to find this one and this one to then multiply them to find dy by dx and then find the gradient. So here we have y equal to exponential, this one. So dy by dt will be what? Differentiate, that will be same thing, times the value of minus 2 minus 2 exponential minus 2t. Now next one, here we have uh, x is equal to t over 2t plus 3. This is a fraction, we can use the uh, quotient rule to find the, to differentiate this one. That will be first, we write the base as it is, multiply by d, by dt of this one, that should be just 1, then minus t, then that will be 2, divide by the base square. Again, this is just a formula we have to know for the quotient rule, right? Nothing tough. Now simplify, here we have 2t plus 3 minus 2t. Now this will give you what? So on top you will have this will go away. You will have 3 and on the base you will have this one. Now once you have find once you find those values, we have to put them back in the main equation, which is dy by dx. So dy by dt is given to you right here, which is minus 2. Exponential, this 1, multiply by. So here we have what? We have dx by dt, but here we have dt by dx. So we just have to flip this upside down. This will go up. And this will come down. So finally, dx by dt will be minus 2 over 3. Exponential, this 1 times this 1. Of course, we can just stop right here. Uh, what's next? Next, we have to find that value when t is 0. So, when t is 0, what is the value of the gradient of dy by dx? So, simplify. That will be what? 0 here, 0 here, plus 3, square. That should be minus 2 over 3, times 1, right? And times 9. That will be 3, 3, and that should be minus 6. So, your answer will be minus 6 for question number 2. To solve this. Now let's move on to question number three. 
the complex number w is defined by 2 plus i. Okay. Now part 1, we have to find w square, express this in this form. So one by one, how would you do this? So w square, so we take w and we square the value. That will be 4 plus 4i plus i square. That will be, of course we should know i square is equal to minus 1, so 4 minus 1 is just 3 plus 4i. Here we go, here we have the value of w square. Now let's find the modulus of this one. So pretty easy. Since we know w square was found to be 3 plus 4i, its modulus will be what? Will be a root of 3 square plus 4 square. That should be 25, and that should be the value of 5 for the modulus of that one. Now, number 2. Shade on an organ diagram, the region whose points representing z in this way. So let's replace the values and see what do we have. So here we have z minus, this is the point 3 plus 4i as we just have, which has right here part 1. Now this will be less than equal to 5. So what is this? As we, have, as we can see, this is in the form of a of circle, right? So we know the distance and it will be a circle of center. This one is your center and this one will be your, your radius. Okay, so we can draw this on an organ diagram. So let's see what can we do. Again, you will have to use your compass. Well, I don't have one for now, so I apologize, but you have to use one to make sure you have a perfect sketch of that diagram. So here I have the values of Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten. This is my real axis. And this one is what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's not perfect. Nine, ten. This is the imaginary axis. Again, you will be using a pencil obviously for your for your sketch. So the first point is 3, 4, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, okay, I'll we'll just have to mark this one as your center of rotation, okay, and then we have radius 5, so we count 5, right, so let's count, it should be 5, again, you will be using a, a compass, so that will be much easier, I'm trying to uh, freehand this, so that's why I have to count, one, two, three, four, five. Right. One, two, three, four, five. You can show this point so you know, so you can show them exactly wh where you have this line here. So one, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine, nine. Now below should be minus one, but let's check. So that'll be one, two, three, four, five. Should be right here. This is the point of minus i. And the last one should be on this side, so we will have 3, 4, 5 should be right here. To show you now, this is the value of what? Of minus 2 right here. So we have to sketch a circle, center this, radius 5. Again, uh, it will not be good. My drawing will be pretty bad, so hopefully you guys use your compass to make this better. So my thing will be kind of like this. I'm trying. There you go. There you go. And with the drum with this one. Well, you can of course skip this one. Skip this part, right? It is kind of stupid to watch me trying to draw a circle. You can skip this one because you get the idea already of what to do. There you go. So this is supposed to be a circle, which is uh, kind of bad, but anyways, the radius have to be 5, and then we have to shade now. The shade tell you has to be inside or equal to 5, so it has, be, has to be a solid circle. Has to be all this thing. So this is your answer for question number 3, part 2. Now the main point of this question is, well, you know, 
Whenever you see that something in this form, you, you try to simplify, you will have something in this form. Now in this form, you have, have to know, once you see this form where z minus something less than a constant, it will be a circle with this center and this radius. So you have, have to know this. You can memorize the form if you want to, but this is the idea of this question. That is question number three. Now let's move on to question number four. It is given that f of x is equal to this thing right here. Okay, part one, find the exact value of f prime of one over nine pi. So f prime is what? f prime of x, we just have to differentiate this, that will be, first multiply by the power, that should be eight, cos, now minus one, that will be three x, multiply by d by dx of this one, that should be minus sine of three x times three. That will be minus 24, sine of three x, and cos of three x. Now we have to replace this back in our equation, so we have this. Replace one over nine pi inside, you will have minus 24. Sine of, so that will be times three, that should be pi over three. And cos pi over three. Now what is pi over three? Pi over three is 180. Over three, that should be 60, right? So here we have minus 24. What is sine of 60? It is root three over two, what is cos of 60? 60, it is one over, over two. So this will be four, cancel out with four, that will be six, minus six with three. There you go. Now for part two, let's find this one, integrate this thing. So let's see how can we do this. So it should not be too bad. Integration of four cos square three x with respect to dx. Now, as I've explained, I uh, have explained many times before, whenever you have square, cos square, sin square, we will be using the formula for cos double angle. For example, I know cos of 2x is what? Cos of 2x is equal to, uh, well, here we have cos square, so I will use 2 cos square x minus 1. Fair enough. So you will have 2 cos square x will be 1 plus cos 2x, right? Now here I have 4, to multiply by 2, you have 4 here, that will become 2 plus cos, so 2 here, cos 2x. Now the only difference here is we have 3x, right? So just be careful, how can you make this become 3x? For example, for this to become 3, I have 2, multiply this by 3, so you will have cos of what? For example, I will have 2 here, but inside I will have 3x. Instead of x, you get the idea, because I need this to be 3x. So when you expand this, you will have 2. Cos square of the inside will be 3x minus 1. Hopefully that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So if I can make this one become this, so for example, replace x by 3x inside, it will give me this thing right here. So, by conclusion, I can derive this. So, 4 cos square 3x have to be 2 plus 2 cos 6x. 2 times 3 is 6. So, here we have to replace this by this. You will have what? Integration of 2 plus 2 cos 6x dx. That will be 2x plus 2. That will be sine of. 6x divided by 6 plus c as the constant of integration. First, simplify, you will have this 2x plus 1 over 3 sine of 6x plus c. Here we go. And this is your question number 4 for this integration and using the cost double angle formulas we have right here. Now let's move on to question number five. So here we have to integrate this. As you can see, we have 2x plus 7 over something. Now, what are you thinking about when you see this? What is your first impression? So the first impression is, well, I have to break this down into partial fraction, right? That makes sense. So this is linear and this is linear. So this will become a over 2x plus 1 plus b over x plus 2. Cross multiply. On the left hand side, I will leave this as such. E is equal to, so this thing times this, you will have a x plus 2 plus b, times this you will have 2x plus 1. Now, 
I will have to choose some values of x so that I can find a and b. So simply let x be the value of minus 2, you will have minus 4 plus 7 should be uh, 3. That will be 0 here, right, because minus 2 plus 3 is 0, plus b, and that should be minus 2 uh, minus 4 plus 1 is minus 3. So b will have to be the value of minus 1, simple. The next value I can choose, well, let me choose x as 0 because it is easy to work with 0. That will be 7. a times 2 plus b is minus 1 times 1. So that will be 8, 2a, a will have to be the value of 4. So finally, this one is what it is, 4 over 2x plus 1 minus 1 over x plus 2. So finally, replace back in your main equation, you will have integration of 7 and 0. This will become 4 over 2x plus 1 minus 1 over x plus 2 dx. So one by one, let's see, here we have 4. That will be ln of the value below and divide by 2. Same, ln of the value below directly divide by 1. Here we have the limits of 7, 0. This will cancel out with this, right? So you will have 2 ln of 2 times this will be 14 plus 1 is 15. And then here we have what? Minus ln of 9 minus, we have what, a 0, that will be uh, 0, 1, ln of 1, so 2 ln of 1, that will cancel out, minus ln of, of 2. Okay, now you can see that this and this will become plus, so in the, eventually you will have ln of 15, we can send this on top, square, minus ln of 9, plus ln of 2. Combine them, because here we have ln, ln, and ln, that will be ln of 15 square, divide by 9, multiply by 2. Let's see what we get for that one. 15 squared times 2 divided by 9 should be 50. So eventually, yes, we confirm it is indeed ln of 50 as your answer for this one. Well, I guess the main point is, is to realize, well, I can break this down into partial fraction and then solve this easily. And that is your question number 5. I hope the first half of the video was somewhat helpful. If you guys would love to access the full video, feel free to click on the Patreon link on the main page. Otherwise, you can go to the description below and click on this link to access the Patreon page for the full video. With that being said, good luck and thank you for watching.